WCHT Local Lifestyles continues. Okay. We are back with Charlie Stalker, and Ron is on the phone for you. First thing this Monday morning. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, Ron. Good, mo good morning. Hey, Charlie. Yeah. Is there a uh, dormant oil spray for fruit trees? Is there a day that you should wait to apply it, or if the weather conditions and everything was right, temperature and no rain, could you actually put that on now? It's, it's a little early. It's a little early because they're not out yet that you really affect the scale or the overwintering insect eggs. You really want to wait. The ideal time is the latest part of February, early March, when you know in 48 hours you're not going to have freezing weather. So if you're not going to have freezing weather for a period of 48 hours, put down or apply the horticultural oil, the dormant oil spray. And how do you do that, Charlie? Uh, you can just use a, a, a sprayer. You wouldn't use a hose-in sprayer, but you use a pump sprayer, and you want to just uh, cover... Uh, the area that you're wanting to control any overwintering insect eggs or scale. And it, it's horticulture oil is an oil, not a water. If you look under a microscope, now I'm telling you more than what you want to know, but it's interesting. Because it is interesting. Water, if you, look at a micro, if you look under a microscope, water is a diatomic molecule and it will only thin out, to, let's say this, whereas oil, because it can go to a single cell, it will get a uh, uh, single molecule, it'll get down to this. So it can get underneath the scale and kill. Water can't do that. Well, that's the, that's that's the, why you that's use the science oil. behind it. Exactly. All. That's, that's, that's the, the science behind right. it. Right. Well, CC is on the phone for you. Morning, CC. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, hi, Charlie. Hi. I'm a West Sider. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> hey, uh, I would like to know. Um, uh, I, I, I just had a knee replacement, and uh, I'm, I'm going to put out a garden uh -huh. in, in April. Great. And it's not going to be a big garden, but I think I'm going to raise it up. But I need to know what's the best way to keep the weeds out so I don't have to get down as much. Sure. Without putting a chemical down. Mulch. I, I would say it a hundred times over. Uh, mulching anywhere from two to three inches after you've got your plants in, put the mulch down. Any wood fibrous type mulch, and it keeps the weeds down, it holds the moisture in. Um, in addition, when you water and you water the mulch, it keeps the spores of, uh, of a disease from coming up and splashing up onto the leaves. Uh, just any number of things. It looks more attractive. But I would definitely say if anything, once you decide where you're going to go with the garden and you know you've got at least six hours of full sun, that's a non-negotiable, six hours of full sun to, get the, to take care of the weeds, go with mulch. And Charlie, does that work for everything you would plant or are there some things that you need to leave exposed? No, there's nothing. So every, you can mulch Carte everything. blanche. Carte blanche. Put mulch down in every place you can in your garden. Do you care about that weed cloth? Is that a, is I don't that like a viable it. thing? I don't okay, like why? it because they say the water penetrates, uh, but it, it, it does something to the soil that makes it less uh, viable to the plants and okay. doesn't really uh, engage with the plants, if you will. So I don't like black plastic. I don't like the DeWitt weed. I say DeWitt weed check. That's the one I'm familiar with. I like just straight soil and then do the mulch on top the of it. The natural thing. Exactly. Ruth is on yeah. the phone for yeah. you. Good morning, Ruth. Morning, Ruth. Yes, this is, uh, I want to know why I can't grow rhubarb here. I'm from South Dakota and Michigan, and <laughs> yeah. they, I could grow it any time. Okay. And now I can't get rhubarb to grow here. We live off of 54 by Brooks. Yeah. Yes. Park. Okay, with rhubarb, forget what soil you have and go with a lot of organic compost. So whatever soil, you may have red clay, you may have clay, you may have Hosmer clay, everything's terrible for the rhubarb. So you manufacture a good composted soil, you plant the roots approximately six inches deep, and then you just keep building up on those rhubarb plants as they start showing through with more compost, more compost. And they really think they're in an artificial environment. But I can't understand, especially, I don't know the variety of rhubarb you're using, but 
the composting is everything to rhubarb. Everything. Is this something you can purchase in a garden center or do you have to make it? Well, you can get certified, good question, you can get certified compost. You just need to make sure it says certified compost. And I need to put on my uh, That would be a good one. website. I need to put on my website what's where you can go to get certified compost. Yes, you do. Yeah. We'll be looking forward to that. All right. And your cheese soup recipe. <laughs> yeah. We'll be back with more local lifestyles right after this. Stay with me.